the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. My dear ones, teachers and students, today, with a big joy, we are celebrating one of the feasts of the Mother of God. Usually we know that those feasts are related either with the visitation of the angel or her dedication to the temple or the conception or other feasts that are related to the Mother of God from her life. But this one is completely different. It's called the Holy Protection of the Theotokos. This happened many years after, about 500 years after Jesus Christ had raised from the dead. There was a righteous man in the city of Constantinople named Saint Andrew, the fool for Christ. Well, there are some people, I don't know if you know what fool for Christ means. The people consider them like fool, like crazy, which they are not. They are playing like that. So because they have so many gifts from God and they don't want to be praised by the people. So to lose their payment from God. So that's why they are playing that they are they have some mental issues but they they don't really they are actually better than many others many of those that are considering them crazy so and this man he liked to to pray in every single church of the city of Constantinople not during the day, but during the night. But we know that the churches are locked during the night. He would go approach the church, the doors, and he would do the sign of the cross, and the doors will open. He will enter, do his prayers, and after do the sign of the cross, and they will lock again. And he was followed by another monk, which his name was Epiphanius. So one night, they actually went to a church where they had the all-night vigil. The all-night vigil is a very long service. It starts about 8.30 in the evening and ends the next morning, 3, 4, 5, 6 in the morning. So that's why, that's why it's called the all-vigil service all night vigil service. So they went to one of those services, he and his student, his disciple. So during the liturgy, something unseen had happened. During the divine liturgy, the mother of God came through the sky the dome of the church was open, and she came, followed by John the Baptist, the, the baptizer, John the theologian, and many, many other saints and angels. So she was coming in front. She approached the holy, the royal doors, and she kneeled before the royal doors, the place I'm staying now, and she was praying with tears for the people and asking her son and God to help the people and to protect them. And after she finished the prayers, she went into the holy altar. She took her veil that actually belonged to her but was taken by the Saint Helen, the mother of Constantine, from Jerusalem and brought in Constantinople and was in that church. She took it and she covered the people that was praying in the church with that veil so that she showed her love and care about this that those that believe in her son 
and respect her and ask her to intercede for us. So, and when the service was finished, she took again the cover, the veil, and put it back in the holy altar, and she left the same way back into heavens. So, this happened in the year of 540 something. So, and from that time, every year, the church is celebrating the Feast of the Holy Protection of the Theotokos in memory of that miracle that uh, had happened that day in uh, the, the, the Church of Constantinople. And we are we're being blessed to partake of the same happiness, happiness and joy to see that to celebrate that feast on our own. And I can tell you one thing that happened to me when I was student at the seminary. On uh, one of the, the feasts of the, the Theotokos, which was the Holy Protection, we were about 1,800 students at the seminary, a very, very big seminary. And there were coming, there was the monastery, there was the seminary, so they had about 1,200 monks. We were about 1,800 students. The, ch the church was um, huge. And uh, actually at the, that monastery we had six churches, so we were divided, and, but we were serving in the cathedral, the, the main one. And uh, there was coming also people with different problems and illnesses. And there was a young girl that was possessed by, the, by an evil spirit. So during the liturgy, right between the gospel and the procession with the holy gifts, that girl started crying with a loud voice. There she is. She is coming. She is covering you with her veil. I did not see it with my eyes, but I heard it saying that she was there. So, and this is a proof for us, my dear ones, that she is always here with us covering us with her holy protection, holy, holy veil, to protect us from all the evil and from all the temptations that are coming upon us. And also we are celebrating today one of Jesus' disciples, Ananias the Apostle. Ananias is the one who baptized Paul the great preacher and apostle of the nations. While he was persecuting the Christians in Damascus, he was going to Damascus, Jesus Christ appeared to him and blinded him so he could not see anymore. And he was ordered him to go in Damascus and find Anania, and Anania will baptize him and teach him everything. This is how Paul became an apostle through the miracle that Jesus appeared to him and ordered him to find Anania and to be taught by him and baptized. And through him, he received the Holy Spirit and he started teaching and preaching the word of God to many, many nations. We know that he traveled a lot all around the world and wrote a lot of epistles that we are reading every day, a lot of his epistles. It's a, it's a big treasury. So and this is due to Saint Anania that we are celebrating also today. And another big saint and writer of the, 
of the church, pretty much 80% of the chanting of the Orthodox Church belongs to this big saint. It's called Saint Romanos the Melodist. He is called Melodist for a reason. He was born somewhere, somewhere in Syria, but he wasn't Arab, neither Greek. He was a Jewish. But he converted to Christianity. He loved Jesus Christ so much and the Mother of God. And he wanted to serve. And he was serving in the church. He was cleaning. He was doing everything in the church. But he wanted to praise, to sing. And he had an awful voice. When he would open his mouth, everybody would, would close their ears because his voice was so disturbing. So they did not allow him to chant. But he never lost his faith. He was praying constantly to the Mother of God and asking her to bless him, to give him the gift to praise her son. And on the Christmas Eve, they had the liturgy in the morning, and he had to clean up the church to prepare it for the Christmas Eve service. After cleaning, he kneeled before the icon of the Theotokos, of the Mother of God, and prayed with tears and begged her to help him. He prayed a lot that he fall asleep kneeling before the icon, like for example here. He was kneeling there and pray, praying till he fall asleep. And in, in his sleep, he saw the mother of God coming out from the icon with a scroll paper with uh, melodies. And she said, swallow it. And he took it, he swallowed it. And when he swallowed it, he's, he felt something on his throat and he walked up and he saw her going, going back to the icon and entering a, again in the same position she was. And uh, right away, he started singing. The first conduction that he wrote, that was that night that we are chanting every uh, Christmas Eve. Today the Virgin gave birth to the Most High God. So that's the first one that he wrote. And uh, when the people came and uh, they started the service, he took the blessing from the priest to chant. And everybody was looking around who is chanting. They never heard that voice. And somebody said, that, that's Romanos. They said, that's impossible. <laughs> and they, when they looked and they realized that was him, they praised all praised God because it was a beautiful gift, not only on chanting, but also writing the hymns. So we have a big treasury from this saint that is given to us and we are rejoicing all this, a lot of, of the chanting that we are doing for her feast uh, belongs to Saint Romanos also. So you see what a big feast we have today. And always when we have a feast that is related to the Mother of God, it's nourishing us, gives us joy, gives us happiness. Because what else? than uh, having the mother of God praying, praying and asking her to intercede for us. And I said this many times. Many would say, well, why should I pray to her when I, sh when I can pray directly to God? Well, imagine if uh, you are friends with the mother of the president of the United States. You can reach easier his mother than reach him, right? So and if you need something from him, you can approach his mother or his brothers, one of his families, and you'll get there. 
So the same thing with the mother of God and the saints. We are not praying to them as gods. We are asking them to intercede for us because they are already there. So, and it's easier when we are asking them. Because remember what Paul was saying. He always in his epistles will ask the people to pray, to intercede in their prayers to God for him. Not that he, he, he was in need of their prayers, but to teach us to be united, to be connected, to pray for each other. Right? And he is saying that through your prayers, when, when, when they was in prison in Asia, through your prayers we were free. Peter, when the entire community of Jerusalem was praying for him, and the angel came and took him out of the prison. See, through the prayers of the congregation, of the community. That's why we are doing these prayers together. That's why we are praying for each other. And that's why we are asking the saints, as Paul said, pray with the saints and for the saints together. Not that the saints are in need of our prayers but to show the connection, the unity, because we are one. And we are not praying to the dead because we know that the soul is eternal. The body is dying, yes, but the soul is eternal. Our soul never dies. So we're not praying to the dead, but we're praying to the living ones and asking them to pray for us. So with this saying, my beloved ones, let us all pray together and praise the Theotokos and the Mother of God to enlighten us and to pray for us and to, to intercede for us and in front of her eternal Father and our God, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you.